I look like, as you can see, somebody who works at an auto body shop. So <laughs> it was kind of the the natural uh, thing for me to do was to hop in there and and play that you know that little little part and throw that line in. So yeah, but I, I certainly wouldn't count myself as a as a star or uh, you know even playing a role for that matter. So don't don't sell yourself short. You have more IMDb you know entries for stars than I do, right? You, you at least have <laughs> one on there, right? So. Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's all out of uh, necessity. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm joined by John Swab, the director, writer, and star of Ida Red, which comes to theaters, digital, and on demand on November 5th, 2021. We're going to talk to him in just a second, but first let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Hey, John. Hey, how you doing, David? Doing well. How are you? Good, good. good. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, so this is, thanks so much for joining me. This is John Swab, the writer, director, and star of Ida Red, which comes to theaters, digital, and on demand on November 5th, 2021. Uh, it's a crime caper that has a lot more drama than you expect and has some really fantastic acting as well. Um, I guess the first question, you, you kind of wear all the hats in this film. So I'll start with the writing side of it. I guess what inspired this story? Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're, you have a lot of family drama. I'm not sure what the, what the nucleus of this was, but I guess what, what inspired your, your writing in this film? Uh, I mean, first of all, I, uh, I don't wear all the hats. I share one, uh, one big hat with my uh, partner in these things, Jeremy Rosen, who's my producer. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, um, you know, we finished a movie called Body Brokers and we kind of sat down afterwards and uh, we're discussing what we wanted to do next. And uh, we both really wanted to tackle something that uh, inspired us, you know, in, in the genre of something that's inspired us to get into making movies, um, you know, like classic crime dramas like Thief or uh, Heat or um, Hardcore, Straight Time, you know, movies of the 70s specifically. And, uh, you know, after that conversation, I, I had a, an idea about a mother in prison and uh, her son outside kind of doing her bidding and uh, just kind of built the story out from there. That's a, that's a great nucleus. And yeah, I'm glad you mentioned those early movies because this had a similar feel. It had, you know, big gunfights. It had some really dramatic music and some really kind of tense moments. Um, I, you know, it was, it was definitely, it definitely felt like a, a throwback type of film, although it had, you know, some, some modern sensibilities as well. Um, the thing that I loved the most, especially in the opening scene, because I, I, I kind of like briefly read about it. Like I don't read much before I watch a movie because I want to kind of go in blind. I'm like, Oh, is that Josh Hartnett? Like, that's awesome. And then, oh, damn, is that Frank Grillo? So, like, how did you get this cast? I, every time I, someone else came on screen, I was excited to see them. I, I just loved this cast. Uh, yeah, no, thanks, man. I was really excited about the cast, too. And I'm always flattered when actors like that, uh, you know, take a chance on us and uh, decide they want to come down and, and say my words and, and be a part of what we're trying to do. Um, you know, in this instance, I'd worked with Frank and Melissa before. So, you know, when I went in to write the script, I wrote both characters for them and with them in mind. Um, so it was a lot of fun to kind of know that they were going to be a part of the film and, uh, and be able to plan for that in the writing and kind of, you know, cheated a little bit towards their sensibilities and things I know that they do really well and, and things I also hadn't seen them do before. Um, in terms of Josh, Josh kind of came on uh, later in the process and, and, it was because of Jeremy uh, having a good rapport with his agent and uh, he read the script and was really excited about it and, you know, um, was excited about working with Frank and Melissa as well. So it, it all just kind of worked out and I'm happy it did because I think everybody did a great job. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I haven't seen Josh in a lot of stuff. He was in a, um, a movie that I saw last year uh, that was like an independent dream movie and it was so great to see him back in, in on the film and then it's good to see him again here. And then also, I guess the other... I don't know, Tempole, there's a, there's a lot of really great stars, but Deborah Ann Wall was also in this, and she did a fantastic job. Even though she doesn't have a ton of screen time, she adds a lot of drama as well. How, how did she get involved? Did you work with her before, or is, was she just another person that you just kind of lucked out with? Yeah, I mean, definitely luck, man. And, and you know, Jeremy and I pride ourselves a lot on, on not overlooking um, the more secondary characters, I guess, if you will, in the film, because I feel like, you know, especially in an indie, that's kind of what separates from me um, something that can kind of rise above feeling indie and not is is kind of making sure that 
even people that don't have a lot of screen time are, you know, seasoned actors who, you know, in Deborah's case, I mean, she's, you know, done a lot of great work on, uh, on, on TV shows and, and in movies as well, but to come down for two days and work with us was, uh, was, um, was humbling to say the least. And, uh, she did a great job and I was really, really happy to get a chance to work with her. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you mentioned a couple of days. Was this a pretty short, uh, shoot? I mean, uh, how, how much time do you have? I know indie films, you always have not enough time, but how, how much time do you have to make this movie? Yeah, it was it was 23 days of principal photography and then about two days of second unit. So, I mean, pretty good by indie standards, I feel like. Uh, you know, most indies, I feel like you get 20 days, maybe 25. But, you know, we were definitely trying to punch above our weight class with, uh, with this story and the amount of locations and the set pieces and the shootouts that you mentioned. So, you know, 25 days or 23 days of principal wasn't necessarily... Uh, what would have been ideal had I had a, uh, you know, a perfect world situation, but, you know, we, we managed to get it done. So. Awesome. And it's, it's always more difficult when you have kind of bigger names in there because their schedules are, are tougher. They, they have more demands. So yeah, I mean, the 23 days seems like a good amount of time for this movie. Um, you mentioned that you wrote uh, Frank Grillo's character kind of with him in mind. And I, I loved his character. Like every time he was on screen, he was like, I described in my review as he's charismatic and unpredictable. And it's a strange combination of like, every time he was on screen, I loved seeing him and I was just holding my breath because I wasn't sure what he was going to do. Uh, did he like, did he improv any of that? Like there were some scenes where he just did some kind of ridiculous things that fit perfectly with his character. Or was that all kind of you visualizing what this character would be like played by Frank Grillo? I'm sorry about my dog. Hey, quit it. Sorry, it's my dog. <laughs> uh, she's a Frank fan. Um, but no, I mean, Frank, uh, you know, I had worked with him before and, and I've gotten to know him pretty well. And the thing about Frank is he's he's really a talented actor. And, uh, and I don't get to see him all the time, you know, really run free, as I like to say. So uh, I, I would say I did my best to create an environment on the page and on set to to let Frank take what I had written and run with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are situations where he is improving, and I just said, Hey man, you know, this is you, you run with it. Or he would come to me with an idea before, you know, we started the day and, and we went with that. And, uh, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Frank and, uh, he's one of my favorite actors and, and he's certainly one of my favorite actors to work with because he is so unpredictable. And, uh, even when I know what he's going to do because we've discussed it and because I wrote it, I, I still have no idea what he's going to end up doing. Yeah. Like how it's going to actually come out. Yeah. Um, I, I can't really predict what, what, you know, he's going to do with that. So it's, it's always exciting to watch. Uh, the scene that, that like uh, first really hit me was there's a scene where he meets someone and he starts dancing kind of with the music and right. I, I was just like this is amazing because you just don't know what's going to happen and I was thought that somewhere I was just holding my breath like I'm not sure what he's going to do uh was that do you know if that was written improv somewhere in between yeah it was it was kind of uh kind of a, an amalgamation it was kind of a three three-pronged idea where I had the idea uh after I'd written the script and kind of uh, on, on the day, I was on, to, on the way to set and I told my producer, Jeremy, hey, I have an idea for Frank to dance and, and do this kind of weird sexual thing uh, before he executes this person. And I said, what do you think about that? And he was like, I think it's great. What song? And uh, Jeremy is uh, also the music supervisor on the movie and uh, has a great music relationships. He's a... Uh, been involved in the music business for a long time so he kind of was off to the races searching for songs he ended up locating promises promises and getting clearance for it that day oh wow and uh and then you know we went to frank on set that day and, and said hey this is this is the idea what do you think about it and he thought it was hysterical so i know the, the dance was not choreographed uh frank you know i didn't know what he was going to do <laughs> in that and uh and I enjoyed it so much that I had him do it like 11 times. And I, we certainly didn't need that many, but uh, I just thought it was so funny and amazing that we just kept, kept going. But it was, I'd say, you know, a, a combo of, of Jeremy, myself and Frank all on that idea. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That that just came together in one day. Cause I mean, I know you're already stressed and trying to figure everything out. And then you're like, I have this great idea. And then you actually able to get it implemented together. That's, that's an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned the music because I loved the music. Like there were so many songs, like I couldn't place any of the songs, but they all fit perfectly. You had some kind of more dramatic 
uh, songs for the tent scenes and then just the the when they're just setting the tone of this town and, and this life you've got some really amazing kind of country and blues songs that pop in that were that just said it perfectly so th this was all your your producer uh, who, who kind of handled that or did you have other uh people helping with the music as well no i mean it's just he and i you know and and i'd say um you know we we talk a lot about music he and i have very similar sensibilities when it comes to to tone and films and, and what we like um, so our, our tastes aren't too different when it comes to, to discussing what we want. And, um, you know, and there, there is great country and, and blues and, uh, you know, some of that's original and some of it's like JJ Kale is, is I think the last needle drop in the film. And he's actually, you know, from Oklahoma where we shot the movie. So it was kind of a little nod to the people of Oklahoma and, you know, the film placing itself. So, uh, we discussed it a lot and um, I, I got to give him a lot of credit because he goes out and locks it down. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the music in this film. I think it elevates it a lot and makes it feel like it's not an indie. Yeah, no, definitely. It definitely gives it a little bit of a, a nice polish to it. And then you mentioned Oklahoma. I love the setting. Like it felt it was kind of this perfect picturesque, idealistic place, but also that felt like maybe it had some age to it and had some, you know, some scars. Uh, so is this, do you, it sounds like maybe you shoot in Oklahoma a lot, or is this just the, the perfect setting for this story that you were trying to tell? Uh, no, I mean, I'm from Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, we have shot, I think uh, that was our fourth movie shooting oh. in Oklahoma. So, you know, a lot of history here um, on the film side, and, and we've gotten to know it pretty well in Norway around it. And yeah, I mean, I just, because I'm from here and, uh, and I know kind of where I am, um, it allows me to kind of uh, not stress about look as much or because I, I'm, it is just kind of a part of who I am being from here. So, uh, you know, it, it, I, I have now started to write movies for Oklahoma, like in, in, in this case with Ida Red. So it, uh, it made it much easier to just know where the film was set, shoot it where it's set and not have to really cheat or hide anything and just lead into what is naturally just available to us. Yeah. Why, why introduce any additional stress? We've already got plenty on your plate. Amen, um, yeah. And I also noticed that you got that that hot uh, star John Swab to play a role in this film. Uh, is 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 playing a role like is that something that you do normally, or was that just kind of a necessity here because you needed someone to fill that role and and you had deadlines? Like, what, 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 how did that uh, I mean, come about? To, to say I played a role is is um, <laughs> is is very uh, generous. I mean, I think I was on screen for you know m maybe under a hundred frames and and certainly less than a second. But um, but. You know, uh, because we shot this during COVID, um, I'd say about 90% of the extras in the movie are people from our crew. Oh, wow. um, so it was, it was, uh, you know, uh, there, there wasn't, I, I look like, as you can see, somebody who works at an auto body shop. So <laughs> it was kind of the, the natural uh, thing for me to do was to hop in there and, and play that, you know, that little, little part and throw that line in. So. Yeah, but I, I certainly wouldn't count myself as a, as a star or, uh, you know, even playing a role for that matter. So don't, don't sell yourself short. You have more IMDb, you know, entries for stars than I do, right? You, you at least have one on there, right? So. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, it was all out of uh, necessity, not not because I wanted to do it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I know we have a limited time. I'm going to switch. I call it the lightning round. There's lightweight questions about the film, uh, things that happen in the film. I want to see how your experiences map on the things in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended at all, but I try to keep them very answerable. Um, first question, and this was one you might want to skip. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, there's a lot of holdup scenes, a lot of uh, tense scenes. Have you ever had a gun pulled on you? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just move to the next one. So there are also many different types of weapons in this film. There's pistols, there's shotguns, there's like assault rifles. What would your weapon of choice be? Uh, probably a Glock. That's a good choice. Uh, there's also a, a, a private jet scene. Have you ever flown on a private jet? Uh, once. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, not for a good reason. It was, uh, it was like a funeral thing that I somehow got to just hop on the private jet. So, oh, yeah. Well, how, however it works, right? Yeah. Um, have you ever been interrogated by police? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, what is the most jo complicated job or event that you've had to plan? And maybe it's um, like movies. Like movies seem pretty complicated. So, uh, most complicated job in life? Uh, yeah, in life. Uh, getting sober. All right, that is a very complicated job, man. How, how long? Uh, six years. Oh wow! Congratulations. That is that Thanks. is a huge accomplishment. Thank, thank you. Yeah, it was a tough one. <laughs> especially, especially through COVID, that is extra impressive. Congratulations. 
Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So you are driving and you see sirens behind you. Do you pull over immediately or do you kind of let, let the cops coast for a little bit? What kind of car am I in? Mm, let's, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's go with a truck. I forget, I forget what kind of car they were driving in the film. I think they were just driving like an old uh, like American car, right? Yeah, I, I think he's driving a uh, 88 Delta 88. So uh, in that car, you stand no chance, man. I might, I might take my time pulling over, but I'd pull over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and these these next questions are inspired by Frank Grillo because I loved his outfits. Have you ever worn a mesh shirt? Uh, I'm sure at some point in my life, yeah, but not anymore. Not 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 in a while. Yeah. I was just like he pulled it off. It's, it's so tough to pull off that look, and he just pulled it off perfectly. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's a special guy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, have you ever worn a cowboy hat, like not as a costume, and just like a normal day to day kind of life? Yeah. Excellent. I mean, I guess in Oklahoma, you kind of kind of grow up with one. Part of it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And so the film is out in theaters digitally and on demand on November fifth, twenty twenty one. Uh, so people can check it out in theaters if they're comfortable. They can check it out digitally if it's not playing near them or if they want to stay home. Um, but you're promoting the film now after the film is out. Like I imagine you probably have some other projects uh, coming up or are you just going to take a, a nice rest and, and recuperate? No, uh, quite the opposite. So we, we, we actually shot a film in between uh, uh, wrapping Ida and, and now called Candyland, which is a uh, slasher throwback horror movie. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then I'm in prep now to start shooting another action neo-western thriller um that we're really excited about so. i love that those are both very different from like what you just made i love the the, the breadth and in, in the projects that you're taking on yeah man i uh i like to work and uh and you know I, I i get the uh i have the opportunity to work with you know one of my best friends and jeremy so you know as long as those two things uh as long as i'm liking what i'm doing and i i, I get to do it with who i like uh why not why not keep it going you know what i mean yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Well, awesome. So thanks so much for your time. This is Josh Sw John Swab, the writer, director, and I'll say star of Ida Red, which is in theaters, digital, and on demand on November 5th, 2021. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, man. Have a great day. Awesome. You too. Take care. Thank you. It's a crime caper that has a lot more drama than you'd expect and has some really great actors. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you and check out my other content. I've got other interviews, reviews, unboxing videos, and a weekly movie recommendation. Thank you. Thank you.